I have not made much progress tonight. Let me show you why. What was I going to do tonight? I was going to vacuum form this mask. I've got my big vacuum former. Don't use it as often as I like. I'm going to use it tonight. And when you know it, uh, plug it in and boom, trip the breaker. But I haven't used this thing. How does it have a short in it? So then I spent a lot of time tracking it down because I've got a junction box where the power comes in. And basically I've got it where you plug, one plug, plugs the whole thing in, powers the air compressor, or rather the vacuum pump powers the heat. And so I plug it in, it's shorted. So I'm trying to track down whether it's the heat, whether it's the vacuum pump, uh, you know, because I've got the junction box where everything comes in. I've got a junction box for the vacuum pump. i got a junction box for the heaters. Uh, so I'm just trying to track that down. I find it. I find the short. It was in the vacuum pump. There's just um, one of the wires that was on the switch for the vacuum pump had come loose. So I've got that working. It works. It does not trip any circuit breakers. It's ready to go. So right now it's late, so I'm probably not going to vacuum form tonight because I still I need to hot glue in some panels from behind the eyes because with that big of a gap, the plastic would just come right, right come all the way through and then create a hole in it, and then I wouldn't get a good back. I, there's just some small holes in the nostrils. I think those are probably small enough that they are going to be okay and actually actually going to help because it's going to suck all the air out of these crevices because otherwise you would not get very good definition in the mouth. But since there's a hole right there, boom, it's going to get that. And the suction is what forms that really tight vacuum, so I need that. The thing is ready to go. And let me show you this vacuum form because I really, I love this thing. It is one of my favorite things I've ever made. It's just, it's so awesome. That is my vacuum former. Sometimes I get an idea in my head where I just want to make a certain tool, certain implement, and this was it. I saw this thing. I uh, looked at a bunch of tutorials online. I saw this professional vacuum former that's like five or $6,000. I thought, can I make that for less? The answer is yes. I think I have a couple to a few hundred in this. But this is a large plate. I think this is... 18 by 24. This is my platen aluminum. Is it platen? I've forgotten all the terms, man. When I made this, I knew it. Uh, but I've got, I think it's platen. And I love how this works. So this handle, well, I don't want to take it down because I'm going to crush all my wires. But basically these handles, you grab the handle up here, you pull it down. The plastic is sandwiched down here. You have it up at the heaters, which are up here. These are all toaster ovens. I, these are, these used to be three toaster ovens. So the heaters out of them, wired them up here. This plastic, once it gets hot, it starts to sag. You pull it down quickly on your buck, which in my case will be a skull. You pull that plastic down. I will have already have activated the vacuum pump. Uh, this pulls a max like 28.5, so I've uh, written down right there. And when you pull the plastic down, as soon as you pull it down, you open this handle, which opens the tank, which sucks all the air out of the plastic. Now, a lot of times what I'll do is, as soon as I cut that on and put the air, I will then switch on the vacuum pump. I've got a different handle that bypasses the tank. So you can you know, pull that last little bit of air out. This is my heater switch. I love the way that looks because you know it's that cool like you know toggle switch thing. Uh, but this is just so that you can easily cut it off and I don't actually knock it because this thing gets really hot. But this is it. That's my tank. I can't remember. That was like a air compressor or air tank from Harbor Freight that I've repurposed. Vacuum pump also from Harbor Freight. Cut the price down. But I love this thing. I don't use as much as I want just because it's pricey. I mean, this plastic, you run through plastic. Every time you use this, that is like 10, 15 bucks of plastic right here on this plate. And a lot of ways. Actually, the last time I used it, plastic was still sitting clamped in the plate and right there. And that's a big sheet of plastic. And I usually try to do a couple things because most things I do are kind of mask size like this. Uh, so I try to do a couple things. So I'm trying to maximize like what I'm using. This is, this is 0.2 plastic. Look at it. There's still a lot of waste there. I can use it for scrap. That is it. That is my vacuum former. That thing. It's a beast. And I I mean, I basically saw a picture of a professional looking at a spot for $6,000. I was like, I want to make that. How do I figure it out? So I figured out, like I knew they had, you know, I could see from the picture they had a gauge. They had some kind of handle. And I just figured out all the plumbing kind of based on what I thought it should do. So I've got this line that goes from my pump to this T. Or no, is this the T? No, that is some kind of valve. Is it a check valve? I bet it's a check. You know, it's been a long time since I've made this. I think it has a check valve so the air doesn't go. Yeah, yeah, check valve. So this is my T that runs off to my gauge. The other side goes to the tank. You can see the tank here. So here's a T here that goes to the tank. That also goes to whatever that thing is. I forget, man, I didn't look all these terms up. And so that is a flange off the bottom of the vacuum form bed. And so in here, like you've got this aluminum here, but I've got some kind of meshing or web or bar stock in here so that 
you know, it's plywood. I don't think it's going to like push it flat. But just in case, like I had such amazing suction that it'd pull it flat, it can't because I've got some kind of web or mesh. I forget. I need to look up my how-to I made a while ago. So these arms, I mean, it, basically this slides up and down to where once this pipe's hot, it slides right down. So that way you get a good, nice contact. You need to bring it down a little bit hard just so it kind of, it does not get stuck on this edge. Because, you know, it's not perfectly, you know, it's got a little bit of movement to it. But it's really nice. When you pull this thing up, lock it in place, heat it up, pull it down. So the only thing I don't like about it is uh, I went a little sm thin on that aluminum sheet. That is very flexible, very thin. I wish I'd gone a little bit thicker on that. It just been a little bit cooler, but even then, I still, I love it. One of the favorite things I made, just because it's so cool, I had to sort out plumbing and electrical and just building the whole apparatus and how it works and fits together. Cool thing. So maybe tomorrow I can back my helmet. At least now it is ready to go and it works. I don't trip any circuit breakers. Though if I did try to run the vacuum pump and the heaters at the same time, I would trip a circuit breaker then. Uh, so usually if I do, I make sure I'm on different circuits and I plug one into one, one into the other, and that works. And I'm a little behind on this. I'd like to be a little bit further today, but the today I'm going to have a helmet or something that looks like a helmet done. And so the benefit to this is that being aired in black glass, most people are not going to know who I am. I'm just going to look like a scary armor dude, which is fine. It gives me some leeway to not quite get accurate to the costume, but I want to be accurate. So this is the helmet, this mess of paper. Uh, I template everything in paper first. That way, when I cut out the foam, I know I'm getting the right size. I don't want to cut out too short. I don't really want to cut out too big because then I'm just wasting space. So I've cut all these paper templates. I've got the skull I vacuum form. Now Aridin, he does not have a lower jaw. And I've looked at pictures trying to pair out because you don't see a chin. And it almost looks like it's a, maybe a piece of the helmet that it, it covers the lower chin. But you just, it stops at the teeth and then there's a recess. And so I'd like to do that because it just kind of adds to the whole mystique of this character. So I am going to do that. I need to figure out exactly where to cut because I'm going to be coming across with the foam that's the body of the helmet onto the skull. Uh, so I need to leave an attachment point and then when I cut the chin or the lower jaw, you know, what do I put under there? How do I attach that? I gotta figure that out. But my template is pretty much close. I've got all this paper. It looks like a lot of nonsense, but it makes sense to me. And I figured out how I'm gonna cut it around because I really needed the skull to figure out how am I gonna cut it around because the helmet itself, it goes around, if I can hold all this, it goes around the cheekbone and then cuts in and there's kind of like these, I always look at mandibles that come out. So I've figured that out and so that way I know how big to cut this. I'm going to do it in two pieces, one kind of flat strip around it. Now the helmet does curve in, in the bottom, like right at the base of the neck. And then it flares out all the way around. It's all these little strips. That's just me playing with right, how wide should I make these pieces because that... Aerodin is a much bigger dude than me, so I can't necessarily go by, oh, he's got this many plates, I need to do that many. I'm looking at portions of his helmet to mine and going from there. So it flares out. And so what happens at the base of the helmet to get that curve, in foam making, if you want to curve like foam, you can heat it and curve it a little bit. But this shape here, this kind of pie, curved pie shape, when you attach two pieces together, like the edges, because foam has thickness, as you attach them together, it curves like that. So that's what I do at the base of the neck. I'll cut a little curve out. And a lot of times with armor, with pauldrons, different things, I will cut it and it's a little too flat and I'll just make a rounded pie cut like that, attach it back, and then you have to try and curve over your shoulder. Now, one thing to think about is like, you see this cut, I've got one straight middle piece and a curve. You don't always want a seam right dead center of your armor just because uh, that seam can kind of get a little crest to it and you don't want that. So if you do a flat spot in the middle and then do two curves on the side when you put it all together like that we know it looks nice and flat and you still have two seams you're having more than one seam you know you're doubling your seams but it just looks a little smoother overall and so that's what i'm gonna do for the helmet i'm gonna run a seam right down the middle i'm gonna create the curved side pieces because the helmet itself kind of peaks and it'd be very difficult to get a peak 
I mean, that seam on each side. So I'm gonna have a seam in the middle. And if you're just doing a helmet for fun, you can always do like a foam banding to make it look like it's come structural. Uh, you can cover it with different things. So I'm working on that helmet and I've got my foam base. So I think I've got all the pieces figured out. I think I'm to the point where I need to cut the foam. Uh, at some point I'll start sticking the horns, the crowns on. Um, currently gluing those because those those bases will have to be cut to fit the helmet because you know you want to get the right angle so they'll need to be cut to fit. But by the end of the day I want this helmet to look like something. I want it something I can put on. I mean I can put it on now. You know, it doesn't quite have the same effect. When it's paper and everything's taped together and look all crazy. But this skull is very big. That's good because I want Aaron to be big. I mean, he's, he should be like 7 or 8 feet tall. Uh, but I've taped this to the phone where my eyes are lined up. And it's just a matter of getting everything to fit. But even taped to this thing, my eyes are right in the center. This chin, it's only a little bit lower than my chin. So if I cut it out, yeah, i got to figure out something to cover my chin. I don't have to follow the conventions exactly. I like to. I like to I recreate it. Just that's fun for me. I mean, some things I'll change because... With some video game things I've done, they're just not realistic. I want it realistic, so I go that route. I've just put contact cement on the horns, the crowns, and I've curved them so that when you glue them together, they have that nice, slight curve. That's what you want, because that's what's going on in the thing. I mean, this, this helmet's going to be awesome. These big spikes all around it, and the mandibles, and... thing about paint also, because... Uh, yeah, the toys are always a great reference for some of these characters, because the toy, you have pictures of all the way around, static, uh, you know, when you're trying to get something from a game. It's always in motion, you never get the quite right angle, or it's just a headshot or a medium shot. And the game, the toys are very gold. I've seen some other, a statue type thing that was very silver. In the game it looks a little more silver, maybe a hint of gold. So I think what I'll do is maybe a little mix, maybe gunmetal, a little bit of gold just to get a sheen to it. So I do a base gunmetal and mist on some gold. You kind of get a sheen where it looks a little gunmetal, but in the right light it may get a little gold. I do want to do a hammered paint. Because all this should be steel, so that hammer paint gives it that nice little bit of texture, a little bit of, you always want texture. And then you all wash it and all that stuff. But that's where we are. I'm going to be cutting foam, gluing foam, putting it all together, and hopefully have a helmet to be wearing around. So now I've brushed one layer of contact cement onto these horns, these spikes. Uh, one layer is plenty, now I'm going to put them together. And the thing with contact cement, it's best to let it sit for 15 minutes. When I was putting together the main headpiece, I did not. It's one of those things, do as I say, not as I do, because... It really is better to wait, so I've been trying to be more patient. Now, really, I want this edge really clean, so I'm going to be lining everything up with that edge. I can start top or bottom, so it'll be easier at the bottom. The base is a little more rigid since it's thicker. And that's why I'm starting to always sand, trim, cut the top. So I want to be really sure to get that first line good. Because I want a really clean, crisp edge. Now, if I somehow do screw it up or it's not quite right, I can always sand it, cut it, trim it to get it right. But if you can avoid work, extra work, I always recommend it. So I'm trying to get that line really good. I'm just putting it together lightly because this is very tacky and it could, if you smush together right from the jump, you probably won't get that part. Uh, like so, like I just messed that up. So I'm pushing it lightly, I did get that one apart. So now I've got it lined up, kind of going back, making sure it's together really well using the table of the bases to really push it together now if I if I, you had a piece that was not quite perfect and you sand it I mean see my cutting was not complete perfect so despite lining up the edges you get a little bit of riffraff nice thing is this is armor so it should have some battle damage I love battle damage anything because if you don't have some damage there's no character there's nothing interesting about it there's nothing for your washes and your dirt to stick to one of the fun things about Mandalorian. He has all these blaster shots and everything. So this is done. The next step is to glue the back onto it because these spikes, they are, they have this peak on the front, but on the back, they are flat. Things will go around the helmet like so. I mean, that is, that's cool. It's just gonna look really good. Once we get the side pieces, that's gonna attach. I'm gonna glue it all the way around. That's gonna attach his face, sturdy that up. Uh, and then once the sides are attached and the face is sturdy, I start building the top because you know the top's gonna attach here. I'm gonna taper it so I get a nice clean line around that. I do wish, I wish he wasn't so angry because Eric Aridin is not so angry and the cheeks like they're kind of lumpy. Like I don't know, this is a very lumpy skull. And I might could try to go back on these cheeks, heat it up, and try to smooth it. That is not the easiest thing to do, but the best thing to do is if I could find something kind of curved, heat up the cheek from the back and kind of like push it into the curve. Because you're just if you don't have something you're pressing against or pushing against. You're just gonna mess it up more. With all my templates, most everything is usually 
one half of the hole and they're mirror images. So I mean this helmet, this is the top part of the dome. I've already traced out the right side, this is the left side. And I do it in marker, that way I've got a great, don't want to get a marker on me, got a great path of what I need to cut. And if I were to somehow start in the middle, if I see marker on the middle one side, I know I need to flip it and do the other side. So it is handy for that as well. And then it's just a matter of taking my cutting board, taking a straight edge, and cutting all this out. And I've mirrored it because you don't want to you don't want to trace your template same side both times because then you're gonna have one that's grain side like this. You get this grain where you want it smooth on the outside. Progress has been made. So this is kind of the the wrap of the helmet. This part face me is the front. So these circles. You know, th this looks cool. It's kind of hard to make. These circles I did with a Forstner bit, it looks a lot like that because it has a Forstner bit. Now, it leaves a bit of a rough hole, as you can see. I'm going to I'm gonna practice on a separate piece of foam, a uh, wood burning tool that I only use for foam. See if I can smooth it out a little bit. I don't care if it's perfectly flat. Uh, I don't quite understand. You know, you look at the references, there's a backing to it. I don't even know why. You would think with the way this helmet's made, there wouldn't be a backing. Uh, but it's not very deep. Uh, so what I might do, I might try the wood burning tool. I may just cut a piece of craft foam, like the thin foam, see if I can get it close to circular and just glue it in there to flatten it out. Because it just, it looks a little rough than I'd like. Uh, the forcing tool, would, you know, in wood, it cuts great. Foam not as well. I did practice on some foam before I used it. Um, my first couple holes were a little rough. You need to go really slow because there's kind of an edge, an outer edge to that forcing bit. You need to let it kind of cut the foam all the way around before you go faster. Because if you don't, you get some tear out, which is what I got, which is okay. I mean, if it's if I'm stuck with what this is, that's okay. Um, it's kind of got like a little, almost like a raindrop, like where the middle is raised, like a like you just kind of took the center of it and pulled it out. So I think the wood burn tool will take care of that. I did. I just sliced in between with a razor blade. These corners I did with uh, just cut those out. I think I'm gonna get a sanding block or a Dremel or something and just round it over. It just needs a little bit of a round though. I mean, it doesn't look bad as it is, but that round over would help. I'm having a little bit of trouble getting that to seal tight. What this thing is supposed to do, these little flaps are supposed to kind of curve out like that. That's going to close up that gap once I can do that. And if all else fails, I can put a little bit of acrylic caulk in there to smooth that out. Uh, all in all, I mean, it's it's looking like a thing. You know, it's you know these things are, in the reference photos, these things are very tight. But once you slit them and you start curving this, they want to open up, which is understandable. I think if we if I can give them to fold out, that'll close them back up a little bit. That just is going to be however this thing wants to be. I'm not going to fool with how that should be or needs to be because as soon as you bend this, all these things, all these lines want to separate. But all I'm liking where it's going. Now these things are a little bit wide for what it is. So I'm probably going to do just a taper cut to just get that edge probably half as thick or at least look half as thick and just taper it up really quick. So I like the thickness, the rigidity, the structure of it. But just, it doesn't, and whenever you have the foam like this, it doesn't look like metal. It doesn't look like armor. So I will always taper cut the edges so they look thin because uh, you can't really tell the taper when it, you're wearing the costume. The next step is to mate my little skull cap with this and just glue it all the way around and figure out how I need to cut it around the mask and then we'll figure out the top and see if we can start doming the top. Uh, I will say it's a great time of year not only is it October is it Halloween baseball playoffs wonderful time of the year. My wood burning tool it looks a lot like this. They all look like this. And I don't have a place. It didn't have a holder. It just sits haphazardly around and I hope it doesn't catch things on fire. So I did. I had this scrap block, drilled a hole in it, like so. And now I've got a place for this thing to sit. Now, it's a wood burning tool that, you know, wood and burning, the thing of wood, I understand what you're thinking. But it doesn't sound like it gets that hot. I mean, generally what I do, I'll just sit it on a block of wood anyway. I've never had that block of wood catch fire. I mean, this is actually in a closed space, but I think this will be just fine. And that way, I can touch this wood, and the thing won't burn me. I don't have to, you know, I'm always able to stay vigilant about my concern for this thing. It gives a nice place to sit where I don't have to worry about it really messing something up or catching something on fire. Because i got paper and foam, and those burn easily. A lot easier than wood. This definitely improves the process. We have progress. I like it's fitting nice around the mask. I need to trim up here. So these bottom pieces, they fit really nice once you splay them out. It's going to be looking good. <laughs> The helmet part has gotten significantly tighter after I glued this on. I don't quite understand why, but what I'm going to do, I'm just going to cut it. I didn't glue all the way around because I knew I'd have to trim around the skull. I'm just going to cut it here and here on each side, put some extensions in there, make it a little bit bigger because it's just, it's not comfortable. And if I'm going to be wearing this, it needs to be comfortable. This is going to be a thing and I really like that. I did flatten out these little spots with the wood burner 
Uh, they're a little bit flatter. I mean, they're not perfect. They certainly look rough, but they also look a lot better than what they did before. So why, when you do these, do you do a curve like that? Because if you don't, if you do it straight like this, when you go to fold it up, you get a big old gap right in the middle. Look at that. If I had a curve there, I'd have a piece there. I don't know. You know, I've done this so many times, and yet you still just don't think about things. Uh, so I'm going to have to recut this, which is fine. I think I probably need to come all the way down to the base anyway. I need to recut that to get a little bit of curve in there. I took a step back to start templating this. I think we're in a good spot. I mean, the, the helmet itself kind of peaks right along here, so that is good. All this is coming down. I mean, again, transferring paper to foam, it's always a little bit weird, but everything looks like it's on a pretty good. I may cut things just a little bit big just to aid in that, but I think we've got something here. This looks really slowly making progress. I've cut up this mask a little bit more. The bottom jaw kind of stuck out. I needed that nice and tight, so I fit it into the helmet. I've thinned out these edges where it connects to the skull just because it needs to be a very thin connection. Probably maybe even thinner than what I have, but I'm concerned of getting thinner on that foam. I don't want it to split. Uh, I've done a little bit wood burning just to flatten that out, smooth out some pieces. That looks like that's a good fit. The next step for that is to contact cement it. I've been working on the horns, the crowns, and I have, I resawed them on the bandsaw just to get a nice steep or shallow angle. I don't know, one of the two. And then I came back on the belt sander just to get a nice, I want a really nice edge that when I glue these together, they meet up really well. Uh, so I get a nice sharp point. So I need to contact cement those. Once that is done, I've got my template for the dome of the helmet. I need to start on that, but the contact cement needs to dry for 15 minutes. It really is the best way just to do it, not get impatient. Like I said, I always get not dry for 15 minutes and then put it together. Baseball, playoffs for yesterday. Really hoping, was really kind of had my money on the Cardinals. And man, I saw them blow a 2 0 lead. It was, they, Phillies scored six runs. Just It's like the Phillies couldn't stop scoring runs. Uh, it was fun to watch. I did catch part of the Padres Mets game. I saw the Padres just. They were not nice to Mr. Max Scherzer. Uh, that's unfortunate, but hey, I want the Padres to win, so I was not all that upset. I mean, Jerkson Profar, that guy, I mean, he's crushing it. The helmet's looking ever more like a thing. Did make the top down, put it together. I templated it, but I templated it before I attached the face, which change the proportions. So this front portion is a little bit long. I think the best way to fix that is just to cut it along these seams, glue the front portion together, figure out how it hits around the head, and then trim it until it fits correctly at the back. But I think I could just shorten the whole thing, but I don't want to go ahead and shorten it and then figure out how it fits. I mean, changing how it fits and the thickness here on the forehead could change things. I think it's just better to do that. Go ahead and attach the back portion of that. We have a helmet and I still need all the spikes. But overall, I mean, from far away, it looks really good. I love the shape of it. It matched up really well. Still have like a few little issues where I've cut the foam thin. See this nice little ridge. It gets a little wonky. It's kind of a bubble here. It's a weird little spot in here. I think I can reinforce that from the back to make that look a little bit better. Then again, overall, like once you paint this and it's done, I don't think people will be worried about the small details, but I worry about them. Some of these gaps, you know, when you're putting foam together, it's very easy to line that up when you have one piece fixed and you're trying to hit it from three different sides. Uh, that's a little tricky, so it's, it's it's got some issues. But overall, man, I really like the shape. You can see the nice curve in the back of the head. I need to flare out these panels on the bottom to match a little closer to the material. But overall, this came out really nice. So now I have all these horns and spikes I need to trim. Uh, I, need to cut the, I made all the bases flat. I need to cut them so they fit around. I mean, look at that. When you put those all the way around, this thing is going to be looking really good and i've not been resting on the fact that while you can see some seams and things which i will use some caulk on i'm probably going to battle damage this which will hide some of that where you won't you know once once you battle damage the seams blend in a little bit better i mean overall man this this is looking good i like it a lot and i mean we've got to put it on right wow it makes me look like a bobblehead 